Good morning everybody, this is Stephen Pugh of the Home Bible College. It is January the 5th and we're beginning our reading today in Genesis and chapter 11. <clears throat> now in chapter 11 we have the close of the first half of the book of Genesis. Already we've seen the creation, the fall, the flood and the next crisis is the Tower of Babel. And then later we see the genealogy of Shem and Terah. And this will introduce the second half of Genesis, which begins with the life of Abraham, followed by Isaac, Jacob and Joseph. So if we remember these eight things, we've got creation, the fall, the flood, the Tower of Babel. Those are world shattering events. And then we have four characters, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob and Joseph. The first thing Moses points out is that the whole earth was speaking one language. It was with one dialect. The next thing we notice is there was a mass movement of men from the promised land to the east and the area of Iraq. They found a plain in the land of Shinar and they lived there. This is what we call a one world political system. The next thing we see is another mass movement to build a tower made of brick. Now God always uses stone but men build out of inferior mud brick. The tower is a religious edifice and it pointed to the stars. The third thing we find is that they say let us make a name for ourselves lest we be scattered. This again was a mass movement and its aim was a culture that was in contradistinction to the name of God. This was an attempt by men to unif excuse me my So this was an attempt by men to unify themselves in such a way that that puts God out of their lives. Then we are told that the Lord came down to see the city and the tower. This was probably a Christophany. The Lord saw that men were united and nothing would be able to stop the plans of men. And as men are sinners, they could involve huge abominations such that God might need to destroy men again. And men were united religiously politically and culturally they had the potential to have priests and kings and prophets and all united together against God the Lord stepped into human history and divided them um, right from the beginning God had been dividing and now he divides the tribes and families into nations they found that working together was impossible because they couldn't understand each other and so the city was not completed the tower was called Babel after the babbling of the languages that were heard there in the future the Antichrist, Antichrist will, excuse me, will seek to build this city again but God will destroy destroy it again in one hour the people were scattered to every continent next Moses records the fifth division of Genesis by saying these are the generations of and this time it is Shem Shem was a hundred years old when he had Arphaxad and this was two years after the flood this is one of the most remarkable clues of scripture it not only pinpoints the year but gives us a time check on the flood as 230 2348 bc then moses continues to give very accurate details of the sons and dates of the family the genealogy comes right down to terah the father of abraham later called abraham Next, a new section begins with the words, these are the generations of. This time, it is Terah. Terah has three sons, Abram, Nahor, and Haran. Haran had a son that he named Lot. Haran died young before his father. Terah lived in Ur of the Chaldees. 
Abraham took Sarah as his wife, but she was barren. Now there are seven barren women in the Bible. The family of Terah started on a westward journey to the promised land. But we find that it was Abraham's vision that started the journey. The next four paragraphs uh, describe the first four events in the life of Abraham. First we have Abraham's call and then we have the digression of Abraham into Egypt and of the consequences when they returned. Then we find that Abraham sorts himself out and builds another altar to the Lord. Abraham builds four altars altogether in his lifetime. In Ur the Lord appeared to Abraham telling him to get out of his country and from his family and from his father's house and to go into the land that the Lord would show him. The Lord promised to make him a great nation and that he would bless him. He also promised that he would bless those who bless them and curse those who curse them. Abraham was obedient, yet his family came with him and they seemed to be a hindrance because when his father was very old, they stayed at Haran. When his father died, they took up the journey again and came into Canaan. Then the Lord appeared to him again and promised that he would give Abraham all the land they could see. Faith had become sight. Abraham built an altar to the Lord and then he moved to Bethel. There he built another altar to the Lord and he called on the name of the Lord. Abraham continues his journey but didn't stop until he reached Egypt. There was a famine in the land. God always tests faith, you see. Uh, when they came in near to Egypt, Abraham said to Sarai, Tell everyone you are my sister. He was afraid because Sarah was very beautiful. Now this was half true, but it was not the whole truth. And we must tell the whole truth and nothing but the truth. The princes liked the look of Sarah, so she was taken to the king of Egypt. The king gave Abraham or Abraham a great deal of flocks and donkeys and camels. But the Lord sent a plague to Pharaoh. Pharaoh knew what, he, what had gone wrong. And so he called Abraham and asked him why he had kept back part of the truth. Abraham replied that he was afraid. And this was the whole truth. Abraham left, but he carried with him the seeds of his exit crisis sorry the seeds of his next crisis Lot had got a taste um, of the cities of uh, Egypt um, and they left with too much uh, livestock we are told that Abraham was very rich in cattle and silver and gold eventually they arrived at the place where they had set out and he had been restored to the Lord and he called upon the name of the Lord but then a problem occurred it's one thing to be re restored to the Lord but the consequences sometimes carry on afterwards the small area of land where they stopped was not big enough for all the herds and the livestock that they had accumulated now there's no difficulty between Abraham and Lot but there was a different a difficulty between um, the herdsmen. Abraham spoke to Lot and suggested that they have that they part company. It had not it had not seen uh, to seem to have occurred to them that they get rid of the livestock. Um, Abraham gave Lot first choice instead of taking the lead, and Lot chose the plain near Sodom and Gomorrah. The area was very lush, like Eden and like Egypt. And Lot chose Jordan, and so they parted company. Abraham lived in Canaan, but the men of Sodom were great sinners before the Lord. Lot was moving into danger. Abraham had allowed Lot to put himself in danger morally and later militarily. When they parted, the Lord appeared to Abraham again, telling him that all that he could see, north, south, east and west, would be his. Yet he never personally possessed any land while he lived, from, apart from the grave of his wife. The Lord promised that it would be his and his seeds forever. 
the Lord also promised that his seed would be as numerous as the grain of sand on the earth. And then the Lord told him to get up and explore the land. Abraham moved to Hebron and built another altar to the Lord. <clears throat> there is a lot in this passage. I could take my time and talk about the events of this passage for a very long time. But I need to share with you my password. Now my password is found in that little uh, passage there in chapter 12 verse 1 now the Lord had said to Abraham get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred and from thy father's house into the land that I will show thee I will make of thee a great nation I will bless thee and make thy name great and thou shalt be a blessing and I will bless them that bless thee and curse him that curseth thee and in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed wow Abraham departed as the Lord had spoken unto him and Lot went with him and Abraham was 75 years old when he departed out of Haran the fact that we're old the fact that we're getting old is not a problem with the Lord the Lord can begin our life later in life and that's exactly what the Lord did with Abraham. At the age of 85, he departed from Haran. And then the next time we see Abraham, he's in the land of Canaan. So there we are. This is um, the beginning of the amazing story of the life of Abraham. Abraham is a type. He's a type of the believer who believes in the promises of God and on the basis of that he's um, a type of faith in God well there we are there's my thought for the day look forward to catching up with you again tomorrow have a great day and bye for now God bless you